Hey, it's David Jeunesse. Welcome to The Practitioners. Welcome to The Practitioners. This is a series uh, started by the Public Sector User Group. The Public Sector User Group under uh, its leader, George Warner, has uh, selected topics, selected experts that they would like uh, to address different topics that have to do with business automation. And we, we try to do this on the second uh, Thursday of the month. And here we are, the second Thursday of June. So uh, glad to have everybody here. Uh, these are always wonderful sessions. Bring your questions because look, we're going to look at the update on IBM Intelligent Document Processing with Dan Wiemey, the Worldwide Program Director for Intelligent Document Processing. Please go on mute if uh, you're not already, and we will. You can come off mute a little bit later. I have the ability to mute you, but not while I'm talking and sharing the screen. So anyway, uh, we're excited. Dan is all set and ready to go. He is uh, dialed in from his home in Montreal, and we're happy to have him. If you are new to this series, I want to let you know you can catch up easily. There's a playlist on uh, YouTube in which a lot of these sessions uh, that are here have to do with the AWS offering for content services or migrating to the cloud. That was a big topic that many of the uh, members of the public sector user group wanted to address. And George and the team are very generously making this series available to any and all. And we're glad to have you here. So, uh, you know, we're part, this is something that we do in the community. Uh, I am the community manager for Business Automation, very proud of what we're doing there. Events, as you can see, topic groups uh, aligned to our products and uh, lots of discussion and interaction happening there. And so I'd love to see you there. That's my little ad for that. And yep, a couple more folks coming in, love it. Come on in, get comfy, uh, grab yourself a beverage and uh, here we go. By the way, we've got an Automation Exposé coming up. <clears throat> Our June Automation Exposé is June 22nd this month. And we have Mike Prentice with us. I think Mike is in the house today, in fact. So stand up, take a bow, Mike. Uh, he's Director of Solutions for Pyramid Solutions. But he is also a longtime case manager expert and... Uh, uh, he has a brand new design and deployment that I think is launching any minute now or if it's just recently launched and he's going to take us through it uh, along with some really cool, uh, you know, how we approached it, lessons learned, and uh, I think you'll get a little bit of a, you know, he called it the joys of IBM case manager. So I think you'll get a sense of uh, where, where he gets the joy from. Uh, so I hope you'll join us. That's in a, a two weeks, two weeks from today. I'm excited about that one. And of course, you know, you guys like these products, you use the products. If you review them, take a picture of any of these. Um, we'll get you a $25 gift card. Good for a nice lunch. All right. Dan, are you ready? Well, Dave, let me jump in first. We'll do, do oh, a yeah. little okay. intro for Dan. I would love to hear from you, George. And what I'll do is uh, shut off the beep. I, I first ran into Dan about 10 years ago. Um, the team and I had this crazy project assignment of consolidating all 57 of New York State's um, accounts payable processes into one. And we're going to have a single ingestion point with data cap. My team and I did not quite know data cap. And we had an arrangement in the SOW where the vendor and their tech staff would teach us data cap. So let me tell you, if anybody says that's the agreement for your team to get trained on a new product, tell them, no, it will fail. The techies are not very good teachers. And on top of that, they felt somewhat disloyal to teaching us how to use data cap. So my account rep, Rich Rose, reached out to Dan Dan came down and was going to give us a POT, proof of technology. It's supposed to be on a Wednesday. He calls me Tuesday morning and says, hey, I'm in town. You guys want to come over this afternoon? We can start early. Well, we ran across the street to the IBM office. Dan 
taught us everything we needed to know in four hours, and we just refined that knowledge over the next day and a half. So the project was a, an outstanding success. We put 32 processors in every data cap uh, server. And then on top of that, that though that's data cap infrastructure ingested 700,000 invoices per year without fail. And they have since turned it into a data cap as a service in New York. So three or four agencies are using the same platform. So I always tell Dan, you saved my bacon. I owe you forever because that was a job out of the governor's office and we were successful and you were a big part of that. So thank you again, Dan. Well, I appreciate that, George. Uh, seems like a lifetime ago though. It really does. It was, but we're not gonna go to that. No, <laughs> we won't, we won't, all right. Um, wow, okay, how do I follow that? So thanks for having me, um, everyone. Um, if I got what, 45 minutes left? I want to leave a left time for questions, so I'm, I'm going to go through a lot of this stuff pretty quickly. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys, answer your questions. Uh, as um, as they said, I'm the currently the product, the program director for uh, IDP at uh, IBM. That means I am responsible for all things capture. That's uh, data cap. Uh, that's uh, uh, automation document processing or ADP. Um, the responsible for the roadmap and, and everything around it. So. Just to level set a little bit, um, what George was talking about was was data cap. Uh, what we've done since data cap, we still have data cap. Data cap not going away. Uh, we have a substantial install base, um, and we plan on continuing to support that install base and adding uh, capabilities and features. And we're going to talk about integration with ADP as well as we uh, go through this presentation here. So, um, our vision at a very high level is to bring as much AI and machine learning uh, and automation to the capture process as, uh, as possible. So for those of you who are using um, tools like DataCap, um, it's a powerful tool, but it is a very manual process, right? So you're creating fingerprints, templates, you're creating locate rules to find your data, uh, maybe some uh, natural language processing extractors. Uh, so you're putting all that together in order to extract your data. It's very time consuming. Uh, very error prone, very difficult to, to maintain. Um, what we're trying to do is to make that a lot easier. So that's really the vision that we have for uh, our IDP platform. Uh, and we're gonna get into a lot of those little details in a bit. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on setting up ADP. I just wanna give you guys a level set of what it does. And then what I wanna do is focus on what we're releasing. Uh, it's a, it's a, we release twice a year. And uh, we've been making some substantial improvements in the product. Uh, we always, out of these types of sessions, we also get a lot of information, a lot of suggestions from, from you, you folks. Uh, and those are very important that you share with us what, uh, what you're seeing, what your, what your thoughts are on the product, what, we're, what we should focus our roadmap on, et cetera. So I'm really looking forward to the Q&A at the end. So from uh, an ADP perspective, uh, it's about capturing your content, uh, reading the data that's on the page uh, through OCR, ICR, the recognition of the characters on the page, uh, extracting that data through those AI and machine learning models, refining the data, which could mean simply converting or formatting the data to suit your uh, requirements for your backend systems, and then finally applying that data to some backend system, whether it's a file repository, maybe you're uploading database uh, information to data databases, et cetera. Um, that's really the, the high level flow of what we're uh, doing in ADP. Uh, it's a no code setup. Very, very easy to learn how to use ADP. You can probably get it done uh, in about a couple hours. You can understand the UI and understand what you're doing and be able to create your own projects, your own document types and your own extractors. Um, data extraction is really ideal for semi-structured and structured uh, documents. Uh, things, the forms that are variable, right? Government forms, insurance forms, banking forms, things of that nature. Uh, AI-based, machine learning-based classification and categorization of documents. Uh, so you upload documents to the system, it learns to recognize those and automatic, automatically classify uh, those, those, um, those documents. Uh, we also use AI with it to, in order to correct uh, the data that's being extracted. So in some cases, OCR is not a perfect uh, science, uh, they're getting substantially better. We're, we're seeing that every release, it's getting, getting better. 
Uh, but in some cases, AI can be used to augment the quality of the data that's being extracted. So uh, it will provide the end user with the ability to quickly correct the data based on what the AI thinks the word should have been, even though the uh, recognition may be wrong. Um, so we're, we're applying AI at, at every stage of, um, of the process, whether it's during the capture, the processing, classification. I talked about even the OCR um, uh, corrections. Um, so we're, we're applying AI at every stage. We have AI la uh, layers for table extractors, signatures, checkboxes, et cetera. So we're really uh, going all in with, with this AI machine learning. Um, very easy to use, no technical training. Like I said, you can learn how to use this with a simple lab within, within a couple hours. It's almost like a guided flow where you, you go through steps one, two, three. Um, and once you've done your steps, you've got yourself a project that you can uh, version and deploy to runtime uh, environments for your users to, uh, to consume. So, all right, so I went through that really, really quickly because I wanted to spend time on what we are now releasing for June because there's a lot of really cool things that, um, so I've been in this business for, for too many years. I, I, I don't remember, I can't, I think 12, 15 years, something like that. Um, I've been on the technical side, I've been on the sales side, and now I'm on the product side. So I've seen, I've seen all three uh, different sides. And I know as a, as a, as a seller, a tech seller, uh, even as a technical resource, there were always some issues, um, some things that I wanted into the product. Um, what I'm enjoying now is um, I, I, get to, I get to direct, I get to uh, push some of the, um, the, the main items that I, I, from a selling perspective, that I thought were always uh, missing in the product. And I want to talk to you about a lot of those things. Um, so, really, we want to be a, able to, to, to go faster uh, to value. So, uh, I want to build a system that I can train and deploy within hours, within days, that will be usable, that will have uh, a high enough extraction rate that it will be, it'll be uh, um, uh, usable. Um, we want to get a very, very high extraction accuracy for both uh, KVPs or key value pairs, values on a form, as well as tables, checkboxes, and signatures. So we're continuing to improve on that. And again, in, in this release 2301, I, I saw a dramatic improvement in, in overall uh, accuracy. We're adding a lot of languages, I think 25 languages in this particular release. Uh, we're adding handwriting support, uh, continuous learning. So uh, changes or corrections that users make uh, at runtime get fed back into the learning algorithms. So that's something that from, I was mentioning earlier from a tech sales perspective, uh, I've been asking for for a very long time. So I'm really excited that we managed to get it done for this, this half. Uh, and then lastly, we have a, a new product called ADP extensions. Uh, or extension, it is a small container, a small Docker container that can be used uh, directly with DataCap. So I'll get into a lot more of these in the next uh, few slides. So from a, a very high level set of, uh, uh, of, of, of highlights, uh, tables are, tables were problematic. Um, they are difficult to extract uh, especially when the columns are very close to each other, they overlap, have uh, nested column headers, et cetera. Uh, so we've done a lot of work on tables. Uh, it is almost unrecognizable compared to the last release. Um, the, we're able to get uh, tables now uh, almost all the time. We're able to get tables across multiple pages. I'm very, very happy with that. Uh, we're adding a recognition engine that's been developed internally through IBM Research and it is specific for low quality documents. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, adding handwriting, 25 new languages, continuous learning, uh, toolkit for BAW. So I don't know if anybody here is using business automation workflow, but we now have a toolkit for data extraction from within BAW. So you can hook in ADP directly. And we have uh, web hooks now, so you can process documents asynchronously. Um, I talked about the small Docker container. We'll get into uh, more details on that. And we have a round trip connector uh, that was built as well in order to use the ADP uh, extension with DataCap. So for those of you that are using DataCap, this is gonna be a very, uh, very cool thing that we're gonna get into. Okay, so let's talk about some of these in more detail. Uh, I've been saying this 
as a seller for a very, very long time. Absolutely every single sales call I was on, this was a question that would come up. When we show the runtime user interface and you make corrections in the user interface, the question I always got inevitably was, do these changes, do these corrections get fed back into the learning model? Up until now, the answer was no, we're working on it. Uh, well, we're releasing it in June. So in this upcoming release in a couple of weeks, this is, a, this is something that we are supporting. Uh, very easy to configure. Uh, you turn it on at a document type or level, whether you want feedback from runtime or not. Uh, and then on a nightly basis, those um, uh, corrections get fed back into the learning algorithms and you can uh, train the system with those corrections. So a really, really cool feature that we've been waiting for for a long time. We have some pretty aggressive plans to do some further improvements in the second half to this tooling. Uh, and this is gonna improve accuracy over time. So in a, an ADP product or project construct, you're gonna create a project. You're gonna create some document types, some fields. You're gonna upload some documents. Uh, and then you're gonna do what's called annotation of that document. You're gonna teach the system uh, what fields you're looking for and how to find those fields, what kind of aliases or synonyms you're gonna to wanna to look for in order to locate that content. Um, once you've done that annotation, you run the training in ADP, it will give you what we call the ground truth, which is the results, the percentage of accuracy that you got at a document type, individual document, as well as a field level accuracy. Um, if you're satisfied with the early training, you then version and deploy that project to your runtime environment. That allows your users to start processing live documents. Up until now, that's where it ended. You would have to train manually back in the design. You'd have to train additional documents in order to improve your, your accuracy. Now, the work that the users are gonna be doing at runtime is gonna take care of that. So from a design standpoint, you're gonna have version and, and deploy that first, that first project. And then from that point forward, users will be able to feed those corrections back into the system. So making it a lot easier. Um, from a table perspective, we've added a lot of different things within the tables uh, to help the system learn where the rows are, where the columns are. So now we have the ability to annotate individual rows and annotate individual fields within that table that helps the system understand the, the, break, the, breaking, the break point of each column and each row. So it'll learn to say, hey, I know that there's some rows in here that are multi-line. They could be up to five lines. The, uh, in some cases, the column width were a little bit difficult to understand because the values were so close to each other or even in some cases overlapped. So we've given you additional ways to annotate the tables in order to increase the accuracy of the table extraction. And from my results, um, it, it is a substantial improvement in, in table extraction. Um, we have 25 additional languages that are being release, released in this, in this um, um, June release. There's one missing here in Greek. Um, it was just added and I didn't get a, a new screenshot of it yet. Uh, we're gonna continue to look at extracting additional languages. We're not doing right to left languages yet. That is something that uh, we might look at doing, but we haven't, uh, we haven't done that yet. I talked about a new OCR engine that IBM Research is building right now, uh, and it is specifically tailored for what we're calling a noisy or low quality documents. Uh, it can be toggled on and off. So depending on the type of documents that you're processing, if you are in a situation where you do get a lot of um, um, poor documents, uh, you can decide to turn that on. Now what happens is ADP will run through the normal uh, recognition engines and if there is an issue where the quality is below a certain threshold, it'll kick in this additional engine to really try to clean out the document and get the data that you want. So the OCR engine does perform substantially better uh, on dirty documents than what we've had previously. Uh, that is the first release that we have of ADP with the IBM OCR engine. Uh, there is a substantial team behind this. Um, it is a very important project within IBM. Uh, so they're continuing to add languages to this. They're continuing to add improvements to it. They are also the team that is responsible for the handwriting recognition engine. Um, which feeds into this slide. So handwriting support is available. It is English for this first release. 
Um, but we are looking to do some, some enhancements to that and adding some languages as well. But that is something that uh, our customers have been asking for for, for a long time. Uh, you can process full page handwriting or a mix of machine and handprint on forms now. If you are using BAW, this is a really cool additional tool that we have available now. So um, from BAW directly, without leaving BAW, you'll have the ability to submit a document from your workflow into ADP, uh, and the system will process uh, the document like it would normally. And through the callback service, it will let BAW know when the data is, is ready, uh, and we will be able to process the output JSON file back into uh, your, your workflow feed. Um, now let's talk about DataCap and ADP working together. So I don't know how many of you are, are familiar with DataCap or are actually using DataCap right now. Uh, and there's always questions of which product should I use and, and, and all that good stuff. Uh, my position on this right now is um, from a DataCap perspective, you're doing things manually. From an ADP perspective, um, you are automating a lot of these uh, extraction capabilities. So why not use them together? Um, you can reduce your data cap footprint, but more importantly, you can make it a lot simpler to, uh, to, to, uh, to extract the data from your, from your documents. Uh, in, and I think on the next slide, I'm going to show you some, um, yeah, on the next slide, I've got some screenshots of what a data cap application may look like. Uh, but they are, they are integrated now, so in, on this slide here, you see the light blue uh, would be the data cap component and the darker blue would be ADP components. So a data cap would uh, ingest the documents. If you want to do any doc processing up front, you can. Uh, and when you're ready to do the uh, OCR and data extraction classification, you would send that document into ADP. ADP would do the, um, the OCR, the, the, the classification, do the extraction of the table values, uh, et cetera. Uh, hold on, something popped up on my screen. I got to get rid of it. Okay, um, and then it can send the data back into DataCap. Now, why would you do that? If you are using DataCap now, you may have some substantial uh, enhancements, uh, customizations made to DataCap. Uh, your users are familiar with the interfaces. They're familiar with the IBM Content Navigator interface, for example. You may want to re remain on DataCap. So the nice thing here is you're going to be able to use your current ingestion mechanisms within DataCap. You're going to be able to use if you had any uh, validations that you're running through um, through DataCap. I uh, mean, you're going against custom databases. You're making web service calls. You're anything that you would have customized in DataCap. You can continue to use that. Maybe you're exporting at completion to your own file repository. You're sending an email, etc. Whatever it is that you're doing in DataCap now, you can continue to do that. What you're going to do. I can't change slides. There we go. What you're going to do, though, is you're going to eliminate the need to create a ton of fingerprints or templates, as another way of calling them, or those two um, crossed out examples there, uh, basically creating manual locate rules to find your data. Uh, very time consuming, incredibly difficult to debug if you have some weird uh, extraction logic in there. Uh, you can eliminate all of that, so it makes it a lot faster for you to develop a data cap application and get into production. You're offloading all of that manual stuff uh, through a single action that you see at the top there, say in page to ADP, to that single action, you're able to um, essentially eliminate the fingerprints and the locate rules from your applications. Now, a side benefit of that is uh, you can also reduce the data cap footprint now, the net, obviously, you have to put some data cap uh, footprint in there, but you'll be able to reduce the data cap footprint because it's not going to have to do OCR. It's not going to have to do classification. It's not going to do any of the, the data extraction. You're not going to have to do any fingerprint maintenance or any of those tasks that you had to do in the past. That goes away. Uh, so essentially, what you're going to do now is from a data cap perspective, uh, your developers are going to be focused more on um, really the, the validation side of things. Uh, how do you validate the data? Um, maintaining the connections to external systems, maybe doing additional customization, but they're not going to be focused on the data extraction at all anymore. Uh, the data extraction part, the ADP part, doesn't have to be done by uh, your IT department either. 
It can be done through a business user. Somebody that's familiar with the documents, they could create the project, upload their documents, train the system to extract the data correctly. So you can offload a lot of those tasks to a, a uh, business unit SME. So what does that mean? So we are now, you can do a full stack uh, cloud pack for business automation install of ADP if you plan on using ADP on its own elsewhere in the organization. But if you plan on using DataCap, as of June now, we will have something, uh, well, actually, it might be a little bit later than June. The product is ready. We're still trying to work out uh, pricing and, and the sizing and things like that. So I think that's going to be a little bit delayed. But what you're going to have is something that we're calling ADP extension. And it's a small, much, much smaller footprint. It is Docker-based. So if you don't have any OpenShift skills, uh, this is this is probably something that will be very interesting for you. The starting size is eight cores and 16 gigabytes bytes of RAM. So very, very reasonable footprint. Um, you can add the handwriting and the uh, IBM OCR to it if you want. The, the that eight core, 16 gigs of RAM does not have that. Uh, if you want to add that, it would add to your footprint, but it's still going to be substantially smaller than what we have with CloudPack. What do you not have with the Docker container? Well, you're not inside CloudPack, so you don't have the runtime components. So if you want to be able to process documents and, and uh, have a user uh, uh, participate in the process and upload documents and verify documents and so on, you would have to run it through something like DataCap or maybe you're a Copax customer, you can use this with Copax as well. Uh, but we do have a DataCap round trip connector for, for this, um, this type of install. Uh, if you're using with a different product, uh, it's a pretty simple thing to build, to build a, a connector to say Cofax or something like that, you can certainly uh, do that. Uh, so the nice thing is, is again, much easier to manage, much smaller footprint, uh, much cheaper hardware than you would have with the full cloud pack. Um, all right, so then this next slide here is uh, for webhooks. This is something that um, is in great demand uh, for systems that call into ADP. The nice thing, well, in the, in the past, if you made an, an API call to ADP, um, it was a synchronous call. You would sit and wait until the document was ready, uh, and then you would you'd have to poll, and eventually your documents were ready and you'd have to download them and, and uh, download your JSON file and, and do what you got to do. In this case here, um, we have the ability to use Webhook to call back the application that sent you the document. So this is going to be a very nice way for, especially in high volume situations, uh, or if you're uploading very large documents, you'll have the ability to call ADP, continue working on something else, and when it's ready, it'll tell you to come get your data. So that's a very nice enhancement that we now have uh, in this release as well. All right, last slide, and then we can open the Q&A. We'll have plenty of time to have this conversation, some questions. Um, so why document processing? Uh, right now, it, it is much quicker to, to build a project. Uh, we do have continuous learning, so the accuracy will go up continuously over time. Uh, it's, it's a very easy application or solution to, to use, to learn how to use. Uh, and, and again, with the accuracy, with the continuous learning, you're getting very high accuracy results. You're able to get uh, results within, within days. So uh, as you train the system, you will see, uh, if it has seen documents before, you will see results immediately. Uh, if it sees uh, new documents that have similar keys, you will see results immediately. As you add more and more documents, the system will be able to handle the variability uh, more, more effectively than it has in the past. So it learns very quickly. You're able to see really good results within hours or days. Uh, and lastly, it's really easy to integrate with other capture solutions out there, um, third-party applications that may need access to something like this. Um, very, very easy to, uh, to integrate. So at this point, David, um, that's all I wanted to talk about. I didn't want to bore people with, with PowerPoints for an hour, so I wanted to leave a lot of time for, uh, for Q&A. So Perfect. we can start that. Yeah, that's what this model is, is a chance for, for questions. We have quite a few built up in the chat. Okay. Uh, George, uh, any uh, kickoff uh, to the, the question segment you want to do? And I'll try to organize the questions into categories so we don't jump around too much. Well, the attendees are making it very clear what their questions are, so let's follow them. Well, okay. what's the most pressing, do you think, or the, the, the biggest uh, theme you're seeing in the questions, George? 
or should we just take them? Just take the questions. <laughs> right. Um, well, there's some questions about um, uh, SharePoint. You know, can we use ADP to extract from SharePoint? Um, I'm not a SharePoint expert, but if SharePoint has the ability to call out, you certainly could. Um, the alternative would be to build an application that would go and get the data out of SharePoint and send it through to, to ADP and then push the data back out. Um, I, I would have to talk to someone that is more familiar with SharePoint, but I don't see why that would be a problem. Right. And related to that is email or fax, you know, images. Um, can they also be fed into ADP? Yeah, so if you're looking for ingestion channels, we had this conversation with George uh, at the beginning of the call. That is something that I want to add to my roadmap is the ability to have ingestion channels for, for ADP. Right now, if you're looking to do some ingestion, uh, the best, easiest way to do that would be through DataCap. You can have a very minimal installation of DataCap that will give you the file import, uh, faxes if you still have faxes, email, scanning, support. Uh, so that is the easiest way to do that with, with ADP right now. Cool. All right. So there's one question just in terms of where uh, installing the product and so forth. So ADP, does it have to be part of the cloud pack for business automation? Uh, is there a separate standalone? Yeah, so that goes down to whether you want the, uh, what we call the ADP extension, which is a new product that we're, um, we're delivering on, on Docker uh, or not. So if you are, looking to integrate with a product like DataCap, you can use the Docker, the ADP extension product. That doesn't need Cloud Pack, but if you're gonna need the runtime components and you're not planning on using something like DataCap, then yes, you would need Cloud Pack for BA in order to, to do that, to process your files. A related question about BAW, you mentioned the integration or the toolkit with BAW. Is, is that packaged together? Uh, you know, just in terms of consuming it, how do you... Uh... It's it's a separate. I'd have to talk to the BAW uh, team, but I believe it's just a separate. It's a um, it's a download. It's a separate download. It's my understanding. Okay, I can take that on. Uh, Matt has a question here. That's I'm just going to read it verbatim because it's a long one. Uh, is there some sort of versioning or better visibility, explainability of what the system is automatically adjusting on the near real time feedback? Uh, i.e., if the real-time processing results in some human error, and that human error makes it into the model, how can we revert <laughs> and not out yeah. of the mistake, right? Yeah, that, that comes up, that, that question comes up a lot. And that was one of the reasons that we, we wanted to wait a little bit in order to deliver this, um, this feedback loop. Um, so, there are thousands, if not tens of thousands of data points that get pushed into ADP through the initial training as well as runtime. Um, a user providing an error is going to get, it's kind of like a drop in the ocean, right? It's going to get forgotten in a way. It's, it's going to get diluted is probably a better way. Uh, so it's not, it's not a huge issue right now. Um, what we are looking to add to the, the product is uh, more filtering as to what was changed and why. So uh, ignoring certain types of changes, if maybe say the OCR quality was poor and that was, an, that was the cause for, the, pro, for the, the correction, you know, there's no point in retraining that, right? So we're gonna add uh, a lot of those enhancements for the second half uh, of the year uh, that should mitigate a lot of these human errors. But again, I, I'm not super concerned with the human error because of the fact that it's just so many thousands of data points that they just get diluted. Cool. I'm just uh, kind of starting at the top and rolling down. So uh, let's talk about OCR a little bit. You mentioned the normal recognition engines. Can you name what those are? And then to be clear, when is the uh, IBM OCR? Uh, oh, you mentioned that in June. Is the I IBM OCR coming to DataCap? So two OCR questions. Okay. So the first part is we, we, we don't want to uh, broadcast the other OCR engine that's an ADP right now because we want to have the ability to replace it whenever we want to. Uh, so it's it's a it's a it's a market it's a it's a common market leading uh, OCR engine that we use, um, and again, if as as we evaluate OCR engines because the technology for OCR is changing very very rapidly right now, uh, 
the recognition results you get today versus what you got, you know, 18 months ago is night and day. So uh, there's always that chance that we're going to replace it. Um, as far as IOCR uh, being added to data cap, um, there are plans for that. We are still trying to work out a schedule in order to do that. Um, there are there's a few things that we are waiting for it to happen before we can commit to that. Uh, again, this is the first release of the IOCR with an ADP. Uh, we're part of the thing that we're waiting for is maybe a little bit more languages for IOCR before we bring it into to data cap, but it is definitely something that I have on my plans to do it sooner than later. Okay. Um, here's a provocative question for you. I, I bet you it was, it was submitted just for that. Hey, RPA can do all this stuff. Why do I need ADP? Go ahead. Take that one up. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a very broad statement. Uh, my next question would be, well, which RPA and what are you looking to extract? Right? Um, there are. RPA, we talked about uh, data cap, it's not data cap, but uh, OCR technology changing a lot in the last 18 months. Um, RPA, the first releases are RPA, they were just basic OCR. Here's, here's the raw data, you go figure out what it is. They've obviously improved in what they can deliver. So it's really a question of, well, which product are we talking about? Uh, and then looking at pros and cons of each, right? Uh, ADP is meant, is a full AI driven data extraction tool for KVPs, tables, checkboxes, signatures, et cetera. Um, most of the RPA systems out there aren't doing that natively. They may be connecting to something else or maybe they're on their way to do something like that, uh, but they typically aren't uh, made to, to do that. They're not specifically designed to do that. That said, I am seeing them show up in IDP um, uh, analyst charts. So, so they are doing some work in, in that regards, for sure. Cool. Uh, as you know, you know, database lookups and other things are certainly part of data cap. So one of the questions here is, can we use external sources for validation in ADP? You'd have to do that through, through data cap. So that's what I'm calling extensibility. Um, I am looking to add extensibility capabilities to ADP sooner than later. I know it's a common recurring theme here, but it's always a question of priorities, right? So for instance, we decided to add handwriting to this release over extensibility. Uh, so we're constantly making these types of decisions. Uh, I wanna be able to add those types of capabilities within, within ADP. It is a very, very high priority of mine that I've had since I was in tech sales. I've been pushing for that for a long time. It just unfortunately didn't make it in this, uh, in this particular release. Cool, cool. Hey. That ADP extension, is there a link, Dan, that we can uh, give to, to users, uh, attendees today who might want to learn more? Um, it, well, it hasn't formally been released. The information I'm giving you today is, is pretty Part of released. the June release. Okay, good. Yeah, so it, it will be released near the end of June. We will have some of the information available then. But as I mentioned earlier, the product is ready. I'm actually literally using it on one of my screens today. Um, Okay. What we don't have is the final pricing and packaging and how customers will be able to download it and things like that. So until I have all that data, all that information, um, I, I, there may be some information we, we can't, we just won't have. Well, you know what we'll do? I'll work with you and your team and we'll get a blog posted about the sure. release towards the end of June and we'll have everything that uh, you, we can share at that moment. Perfect. So Sounds stay great. tuned, come back to the community once a week at least and uh, we'll have... Good stuff for you. Sounds good. Uh, hey, somebody wants to install ADP on-prem. Can you do it? Yep, absolutely. So you can install ADP. Again, uh, depends on whether <clears throat> whether you're going to use it with DataCap or not. If you're using it with DataCap, it's a Docker install. If you're using it standalone, it's Cloud Pack install. So that's an, an open shift environment. But you can absolutely do an install on-prem. Good, good, good. Uh, Checkboxes. Can you extract checkboxes in ADP and you can. Map, map them to XML? Um, map them to XML. I'm not sure what that means, but so here's how we do it. So export we have, to XML. Yeah. Okay. So well, we export the JSON. Uh, then, if you want to mis massage those into XML, you could you could certainly do that. Um, so we support actually as of this release, we added additional support for uh, bubble type checkboxes. If you know what I mean, a uh, little circle yeah. inside a dot inside a circle. 
So not, not the, tr the traditional checkbox, uh, but that, that is now supported. So we support the traditional checkboxes as well as those. If a checkbox is marked, it will appear in the JSON as one of the values as uh, true or false, whether it was, it was checked or not. Uh, so from if you want to do something with XML, you can certainly just extract that from the JSON file, or you can use DataCap. DataCap can probably do that for you as well pretty easily. Cool. Uh, let's see. Well, let's talk a little bit more about uh, entitlement. So if you have Cloud Pack for business automation, are you entitled to the ADP container? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we don't have the packaging, pricing, and some of the sizing information yet. So I will have to punt on that. Stay okay. tuned. Okay. Uh, can you support multiple applications with one ADP install? Uh, you can. You can. Um, every, uh, you, well, what we call projects. So Dave, if you want to have your own project for your, your, your business unit, I want to have my own for my business unit. You can certainly create your own project, your own document types within them. Uh, I could do the same. Uh, and one of the cool things that you could do as well is if, for instance, we share something, for instance, we're both processing invoices, uh, and I've already spent a bunch of time training invoices, I can export my project, you can import into your project if you want to do that. So you could leverage the work that I'm doing inside your own project and share some of that information. Great answer. Somebody just said, hey, I want to see the playlist for uh, the practitioners. I popped it in the chat. <clears throat> Um, doo -doo -doo. Can you choose OCR engines in ADP? It doesn't sound like you can yet. You, you can. Uh, there is in your project settings, you can select uh, engine one or engine two. Engine one is the native uh, uh, one and engine two is the IBM OCR. Uh, if, you could if you turn them both on, it will automatically fall back to uh, the IBM OCR if the quality of the document is poor. Excellent. I see still a lot of questions about external uh, input sources, and I think you've addressed that. So I'm going to just I'm going to set those aside. Okay. Uh, that that's all. That's still coming. You know, ICC has been brought up. We talked about mail and fax, and so I, I put them all in the same category. Um, Caleb has lined up a, a few questions for us, so let's address some of Caleb's questions for you. Um, all right. Caleb is always. Uh, uh, always presents good challenging questions. So thank you for being here. How about full color 24 MP images embedded in PDFs, et cetera? Like, uh, or... I don't know of any limitation with regards to that. You should be able to to process them without any issues. I, Caleb, I'm more than happy if you have an example. I, I've, I'll run one and see if, I, if there's an issue, but I, I don't know of any limitations from as far as that's concerned. In the related, uh, you know, is support on recognition on grayscale. Now we used to use grayscale for all different types of sort of industry specific uh, applications. I remember you get a better, you get a better, uh, what's the word, you know, points, uh, pixels per whatever. So how about grayscale support? No problem at all. Um, color, grayscale, black and white. Um, we, I, do, I have an example of a document uh, that I was processing earlier that has, it was, it was a grayscale, but really, really low quality grayscale. Uh, the system has, again, it, it'll fall back to the IBM OCR engine. I was able to get about 90, 95% of the data off the document. So uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It'll, it'll work. You're keeping up with them here, Dan. Thank you so much. I'm trying, I'm trying. Caleb uh, envisioned a, a scenario where perhaps there's multiple calls in a data cap workflow, multiple calls out to ADP, depending, you know, for classify up front before assembly and then maybe data extraction somewhere else in the workflow. Can you can you configure something like that? So calling calling ADP at different steps in a workflow? Different that... steps, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's really, BAW controls it. BAW has the ability to call it anytime it wants. So you may come back to a situation where, hey, I sent the documents over, and for whatever reason, hey, I thought it was document type A, it came back as document type B. Uh, maybe you want to do something different in a, a second step of the workflow. You say, hey, no, I want you to process this as document type B, uh, and then tell uh, ADP to process it differently and give you different results. You can certainly do that. It's That would all be controlled by the BAW workflow. What, what about within DataCap, though? I mean, I'm thinking of capture workflow within DataCap. I think that's what Caleb asked. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, 
So you have the, well, you have to, again, data cap will control it. So if you want to, based on a certain condition, do something differently, um, you certainly can. So in the API call, you decide uh, the types of information that it's going to return. Do you want the classification? Do you want the KVPs? Do you want only the high scoring KVPs? Uh, or do you want everything, even the low confidence ones that it found? You select those through the switches that you set on the API call. So you could, you could process it a, a couple of times if you wanted to do different things, but I'm not sure why you would do that, but it's certainly possible. And you David, that. Yeah. Uh, I was actually, I had a typo in my next question, but the next question ties directly into this one. Um, so integrating ADP uh, web, web hooks into data cap um, TMS so that you basically set up ADP program work steps as part of your, AD, your data cap capture path. Is there any toolkit or like, pattern for integrating webhooks into TMS? There's, to my knowledge, there's no way to do that with DataCap. Now, DataCap doesn't have the construct of um, callback. Um, that's that's my understanding. I'm not, I, I'd have to I, I'd have to triple check that, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's what I understood from the development staff. Definitely and, something that I'd love to see, though. Well, that's why uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, I'm going to capture all of these questions, these suggestions. The recording, of course, will be available within 48 hours and uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, so all of this is is uh, is in the record now. The uh, so on on that point for the the callbacks, um, this is Scott Sumner Moore. I, I developed the connector, and I didn't know of a way of of doing that with TMS. But if, if any of you do know of a way, um, please let me know. I'd, I'd be happy to to add that kind of capability to the connector. I really want to do a shout out to Scott. I didn't know you were on, Scott. I would have done it sooner. Um, Scott single-handedly built this data cap connect, round trip connector for, for this. Uh, started off as a side project, a favor to me, actually. And um, he he came through. Within, I think you built it like within a day or two. I had my first prototypes. So really, uh, thank you again. Shout out to Scott. I mean, you, um, well, above and beyond for sure. Great, great to have the all the talent here that we have in this room. And thank you all for being here. There's more to go though. So we got about eight more minutes and we're gonna take every second of Dan's time. So. Hey, any integration with RPA or planned at this point? That is something that, um, so we're doing a lot of work with Watson Orchestrate. Um, and we're going to be, because of that, we're going to be looking to do a lot more integrations with some of the other BA products. I expect that RPA will be one of those. I don't have that contained right now. I don't, um, I do think there's some value there. So uh, we're definitely something that we're going to look into. I don't have anything definite yet, though. Well, we've we've certainly seen some use cases where um, either workflow or RPA is orchestrating a set of steps and can call ADP. So, it, I mean, that's not an integration, but it's. <laughs> well, the the good thing about RPA though is, I'm not sure how complicated the RPA integration would be because it's to call ADP is a REST API call which RPA can do. Uh, and then we're going to send it back a JSON file, which RPA can parse and get information from. Yeah. So it might not be a fully uh, integrated solution, meaning you, you know, here's my server and just, it does everything for you. You might have to do some configurations within RPA, but I don't see that as, as a very steep hill to climb, quite frankly. Yeah. Hey, Dave. Uh, yeah. Let me interject here quick. Okay, folks, this is where we kind of start determining what do you want for the next uh, the next monthly webinar. In the past, we've we've continued a discussion. We did content services on AWS for three months. So if you guys want us to invite guys and ladies to invite Dan back next month, um, start saying so in the chat, and let's see what the consensus is. Because I hear a lot of questions that are trying to go a lot deeper, and we're going to run out of time today. So, I'm sure yeah, there's, 
there's quite I'm going to put Dan in a box and say, I'm sure he'll come back because he won't say no. But uh, <laughs> I can't so say no now, no, George. Kind of put me on the spot. <laughs> I know. That's how I do it. I'll, I'll start saying uh, in the chat if you want Dan to come back next month. Yeah. Uh, do you have Dutch? I've got a, we've got some friends from Europe here wondering if. if yeah, Dutch is supported. Okay, good. <laughs> that was an easy one. Um, security. Let's talk about security on it on ADP, uh, AI, securing data. All of the stuff that goes along with that. Now, this is IBM after all, so I would assume there's pretty heightened uh, standards. Um, the issues with data security concerns are usually about uh, storage of data. Um, and it's, it's not something that from an ADP perspective um, is, is a huge uh, impact. Uh, keep in mind, ADP is really just a temporary processing center. You give me the, the, the image, uh, well, first of all, the system is on-prem, you own the, the hardware, it's, it's on your uh, servers. Uh, you're going to send the document over into ADP. We're going to process the document, uh, and then we're going to terminate. When we terminate, uh, the document goes away. It is just a processing center. So from a, a storage standpoint, uh, it's not uh, the same as, say, uh, Chad GPT, where I can go back on the Chad GPT tomorrow, and, and the stuff that I would have done is still there from a month ago, right? It's not the same kind of construct. So so our, the standards for security are a little bit different, but, of course, being IBM, we are in, incredibly security sensitive, sensitive, so it, we go through all the normal um, uh, certifications that are required by the industry. Nice. Uh, okay, let's say you deploy ADP uh, connector on Docker, or you have the full instance on Red Hat OpenShift. Are there differences? Is there limitations to the? There, uh, there is a uh, there is a limitation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the runtime component of ADP is not on Docker. You need Cloud Pack for that. So if you want to use only ADP, whereas uh, your your users will uh, upload, well, they'll, they'll design the project, they'll process documents through ADP, all of that, uh, you're going to need Cloud Pack. If you are planning on using DataCap as the front end for your users, then you can use the Docker. That is one of the big differences. Nice. Actually, in the chat, people are answering other questions. Caleb just took on one, so thank you for that. Um, uh, I love it. This is this is what the practitioners is all about. Very exciting. A uh, lot of applause to you, Dan. By the way, uh, for taking for bringing it to us and taking all these questions. So all I did is present the PowerPoint. I didn't do any of the hard work. That's all the development teams. Yeah, and you're, you've also slides. been overwhelm overwhelmingly invited back next month. We just have to figure out <laughs> it's Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be great. You know what we can do too is take these questions and then Dan and the team can kind of come yeah. back with a a prepared statement after the release that comes out June. What date do we have? Do we have a, a an actual release? I've been date? saying end of June just to be safe. Yes. It's it's so so putting you on the spot that means next month you can tell us what's in the release. Um yeah I mean it's okay it's good by the yeah, should be out. I'll probably have an update too on the containers by then. So I think the containers uh the the ADP extension we're probably looking at end of July, I think, at the earliest that we can actually have all the pricing information and so on. So hopefully by then I'll have a little bit more clarity. And I'll be able to share some of the information. And, with you. And we'd rather focus on the technology part. This is like the shade tree mechanic. Uh, we'll, we'll let the, the money stuff not deter us. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, a lot of good thinking going on here in the last two minutes. Uh, let's see. What is the AI used inside of ADP? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? A, a lot of it. Well, so there are multiple layers in there. There's dozens of different components, right? So we're not using the same thing for tables as we are for signatures, for example. Uh, so there, we, there's not a um, a name I can say. Hey, we're using we're using this um, again. That changes as well. So just like the old CR engines, uh, we are swapping in and out AI engines as needed as new ones come out. We are evaluating one right now. 
Uh, so it's it's not something that we typically want to share because of the dynamic nature of it. But there are a bunch of different ones in there. Very nice. Uh, somebody was asking about uh, what about some of those upcoming sessions? So let me just quickly share my screen. And uh, what I want to tell you is go to the community, the business automation community and events in the next uh, few weeks are always here. I'm just scrolling down from the, the you can see the topic groups. You can see latest blog. You can see stuff going on here. Scott was in here recently talking about the, the new round trip with data cap, uh, uh, you know, thingy. Let's call it a thingy. Uh, so just drop in here once a week at least. You can see what's coming up. Automation expose, as I say, in two weeks. So uh, this is uh, your home for, you know, checking in on what's going on and uh, checking in with others who do what you do and think about what you think about. And here we are, top of the hour, saying thank you very much to Dan Wemay, the Worldwide Program Director for Intelligent Document Processing. He puts the intelligence in the, in IDP. So thank you, Dan. <laughs> thank you, Scott. So thank wait, you. wait, Dave, the, the yeah. questions that we have still, they're going to get answers to? Well, we're going to collect them all and I've got uh, right. emails if we want to, we can uh, actually, you know, answer them and send them as, as emails. So, yeah, uh, and then we'll, and then we'll figure out a, a date for next month. Cause you, you're a hot topic, Dan, you're really hot here. Apparently it's it's a, may be burning, but you're a hot topic. topic. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks everybody for your time. Yeah. Thanks for being here. George, any last thought? No, just thank you, everybody, and let's keep on going because we got a lot to do, folks. There you go.